All right, so I said I'd be making a part two showing you how to set up this filter. And so we're out here in my backyard just because where I'm going to be installing this filter is not an easy place to see this at. We're going to be putting it under a sink, so you obviously wouldn't be able to see very well under there. So I'm going to do the setup out here. And so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take these and use them to cut these ties that are around this uh, tube here without cutting the actual tube. Now these are actually pipe cutters, obviously for cutting pipes, and I'm also going to use those to cut this tubing here, which they are overkill, but when you cut this type of tube, you want something that is going to more slice than like pinch cut like a scissors will. You want it to come straight down, um, just because kinking this tube is not a good thing. You can use scissors if that's all you have, but it's better to have some sort of like flat bladed slicing tool. And so step one when you are setting up this filter is to unhook these pre-filters from your RO membrane. Now depending on whether you have DI here, you might need to unhook something right in here, but in my case I need to unhook what goes from this side over to here. So I'm just going to take the quick and easy route here and just unplug this tube that goes into the auto shut off valve. All right, so now that we're in close here, you can see that this tube was going down through here, coming up through this here, and going into the fitting right here. And so I just basically unhooked it and just faced it the other way towards that bucket so that I can show you what the water coming out of there will look like when you first start flushing. Now how these fittings work, basically, is that you just have to push the tube in a little bit more, and then there's a ring here that you can kind of see and so you got to hold that in while you pull the tube back outwards. Now you can try to hold that with your finger or they sell tools that will actually hold that in for you. So anyways, now that I've got that unhooked, I'm going to hook up these first three filters to my garden hose tap over here so that I can flush out the pre-filters. All right, so here we see my faucet right there. And I've got the little black connector that they include to hook up to a garden hose here. And I'm just going to screw this on. And then I need to connect my, in this case it's red, depending on what system you have it might be different, but it's the hose that goes into the pre-filters. So in my case, once again, this is red. And all you gotta do for these type of fittings is just push them up as hard as you can and as far as you can. And then when you pull back, it should not come out. And so that's all you gotta do for this part. And then of course, the hose that we unhooked earlier is gonna start spitting out water once you turn it on. So make sure you have a way to catch that. So I'm going to turn on the tap now, and we're going to see what type of water is coming out into that bucket. All right, so I'm turning the tap on now. And you can see these canisters starting to fill with water. And it's going to fill that one, that one, and that one. And then it's going to start spitting out water at the end. And once all of these have filled up, I will show you guys what that's looking like over there. All right, so this has begun spitting out water now, and you can see in the bottom of that bucket, that first little few spits of water it spit out were almost completely black. And now the water coming through is a lot more clear than it was. I'm gonna shut this off real quick so I can not have to talk over it. But the first few spits of water it spit out were almost completely black, and that's because of the little excess charcoal that's coming out of these carbon filters during the manufacturing process there's some residual in there and so it's coming out of there and then afterwards it's going to start spitting out pretty clean water but you still want to flush it for at least they say I believe 10 gallons so that um, just to make sure you get all that particulate out otherwise that will start jamming up your reverse osmosis filter faster than it needs to so I'm going to flush this for at least 10 gallons and then I'll be back all right, so I've flushed a good bit of water through the pre-filters here, and now I want to flush out the RO membrane, but before I do that, I want to install this flush kit that's from my old RO system. So I'm going to show you guys how to install that. All right, so first here we want to reconnect that water hose that we unhooked. So I'm just going to take this and hook it back up before I forget to do that. So that's in as far as it'll go, pull back and it's not sliding out, so we're good there. So to install the flush kit, you're going to look for your flow restrictor here, and it says flow with an arrow, and in this case 550, which is how much water it allows to flow. So we want to unhook this. 
So to unhook it, you push in the hose, you grab this little piece right here, see how it moves? You push it in, hold it with your finger, and slide the hose out. Once again, we push, hold it, and pull it off. So now what we need to do is take a look at our flush kit here. Basically, it's two Y fittings, which are spelled W-Y-E. If you're looking for them, it's not just like the letter Y. So you're looking for a quarter inch push W-Y-E fitting. And basically, it just splits the water up into two flows and then brings it back together. And you need some short sections of tube here and a valve. And then you're going to put in your flow meter on this empty spot right here. So I'm just going to push that in as far as it'll go. And push that in. And since I had this in a system already, that was cut perfectly. And now, of course, you might have to experiment a little to find the right fit. Now, I just want to make sure we've still got the flow arrow going the right way. That is critical. The flow arrow points that way, and the water is going to flow that way, so we're still good. So now, we can just hook this right back in there. I'm going to cut this tube just a little bit shorter, just so the valve's not way over there, because I want to tuck it back under. So I'm going to take my pipe cutters, you can take whatever you've got to cut your tubing, and I'm going to say right about here seems good, so I'm just going to slice it right through, and these pipe cutters give you a nice clean cut without crushing the tube. So now that I've cut that, I'm just going to pop this on, again, double check the flow, it's flowing in the right direction. So. I'm just going to pop that on, make sure it's on there good, and reconnect the black hose to the end here. Pop that on, and it's also good. So now that can just lay flat, and under normal operation, you just leave this valve closed and you're fine. But when you first start up the system, and right before it shuts off, you want to open up this valve to let water flow through freely through the filter to flush out all of the particulate that gets caught in the filter. And then... Once you're done flushing it, you close it, and the water resumes flowing through at a metered rate. So like I said, you run that at about the first 30 seconds to a minute and the last 30 seconds to a minute of your filtering process, as well as every one to two hours if you're filtering a large amount of water. All right, so now that everything's reassembled, you can turn your water back on, and you do not want to connect your deionization resin yet. If you have that, you want to leave that unhooked for this next process which you need to flush at least 10 gallons of water through your RO filter before you can hook it up to the DI. And so you can, if you have that flush valve like I do, you can open that up, and if you don't, then I guess you're fine too. But you just want to flush about 10 gallons through that, and don't, don't drink that or anything. I'm sure you'd be fine, but just, they say not to do it, so don't do it. And just dump that water, of course, let your waste water go down the drain. And then once you flush that 10 gallons, you can start using the RO water after that, or hook it up to your DI if you have it. So I'm just going to hook this up and let it flow for a good 10 gallons, which, according to my math, should take about 3 hours. Alright, so the water's been running for a little bit, and the RO membrane took a little while to fill up. It took like 30 seconds or so, and now you can see that there is a dribble of RO water coming out of the filter. Now this is normal. You'll see a little dribble of RO water and a steady flow of wastewater. That's just how reverse osmosis works. It's a wasteful process, but it's necessary for how the process works. So we're just gonna let that fill up and let it take its time, I guess. And once it's filled this bucket up twice, then it's time to hook up my deionization stage.